So let's start designing our discontinuous lurking methods. And we'll do so by the hand of the following model problem. This is a, a, a model problem that represents a hyperbolic system of equations. Uh, the v i is v is a vector of states. So v is a vector of states. States in this sense may mean uh, the fluid density at a certain point, its momentum, uh, its internal energy, and then this hyperbolic system of equations is the the PDE that governs their um, propagation in space and in time. Uh, so let's. Take a look at a couple of examples so we understand what this means. Uh, and then we'll actually also see that this is a very general definition of a system of conservation equations. And that's why they're so important for fluid mechanics, because in fluid mechanics it's all about conservation. Conservation of mass, conservation of momentum. Uh, so um, the pure advection equation that we've seen already uh, is an example. Oh, so actually before I go into that, let me also not only talk about V, but talk about F as well. So F, uh, Fi of V at X are the flux functions. So they are the physical laws that, that tell us how exactly uh, information propagates um, as a function of the information itself. Now we'll see a couple of examples in, in right now. Uh, so one example is pure advection. And we've talked about pure advection before, although we didn't really talk about it in a transient way, a time-dependent way. We talked about it purely in the spatial uh, domain. Um, but pure advection would follow from the choice of um, V I is simply phi, a certain scalar, so it's, it's, not, it's not a vector of states, it's just one state, phi, phi. and the flux function f of v at x is going to be equal to, well, in this case, simply f of phi, and that's going to be equal to a phi, now, where a is our advective field. So if we then take a look at what that hyperbolic system of equations, well, at this point it's not a system of equations, it's just one equation, would look like, it would be that the time derivative of phi plus the divergence of a phi is equal to zero. And if we had then a divergence-free velocity field, then we recover the equation that we've, we've been working with, uh, where we now have a dot gradient of phi, right? So that's our advective term. So other equations of the same form are the Euler equations, uh, where our vector of states uh, involves what the examples that I, I just mentioned, so our density, our momentum, uh, internal energy, and also compressible Navier-Stokes can be written almost in the same way. Yeah, so a lot of the equations that are very important for fluid mechanics uh, follow this basic, uh, basic outline. Um, f may be nonlinear, for example, for that Euler equation, may be a nonlinear function of the states itself. It may be linear, like uh, the pure advection right here. Um, but important right now is for this to be a hyperbolic uh, system, system of equations, is if it only depends on the states and not on the derivatives of the states. Yeah? If you also take the derivatives of the states, then you can also get parabolic uh, partial differential equations, and then in indeed the uh, compressible and navier Stokes equations would also follow uh, uh, from this, this sense. But if, for now, we'll only focus on, on f being a function of the state itself and not, not the derivatives of the states. Uh, so f of phi is a function only of, of phi, not of d phi dx. Okay, so the important thing to realize here is that uh, equations of this form are conservation equations. And I can motivate that quite straightforwardly by a, a very simple um, uh, derivation. Suppose that I have um, uh, a set of states that satisfies this partial differential equation. Well, then I can simply integrate this partial differential equation on a certain volume. Let me take um, something that looks like this. That's going to be called V. Well, no, that's going to let's, let me call that uh, omega star, some, some arbitrary volume. Um, we can pull out the time derivative, right? Uh, the, this commute, integration differentiation. So then we get DDT of 
Vi, the ith state, on omega star plus uh, the divergence of the flux of so this, yeah okay of the states at, at the position x omega star um, well this is screaming for the use of uh, the divergence theorem so we have that the time derivative of well the total quantity in our domain of state i is going to change according to um, according to what flows into it across its boundary partial omega star of f i v x dot n yeah, and this is a, an outward facing normal and that's why we have a negative sign here so this is also shown what these flux functions are uh, they are uh, the functions that that say that, that tell us how the information propagates, like uh, to what extent it flows through any arbitrary surface. Now, why does this mean that it's a conservation equation? Well, what we can do is we can make the same argument, not only on omega star, but also if we cut omega star into an omega 1 and an omega 2. And then you'll see that uh, in order for, if this is satisfied, uh, then it has to be satisfied, well, on the complete omega star, but also on omega 1 and omega 2. And if we then subtract all these equations from one another, then that is saying that whatever flows out of omega 1 has to flow into omega 2 according to that or across that boundary. And if we have something that flows out of one domain and into the has to flow into the other domain, then that uh, the total amount of that, that, that quantity is conserved. Yeah? So these equations of this form uh, are about conserved quantities, conservation laws, and that is again what is important for fluid mechanics. Okay. And this is why we're calling this the flux function. Okay, so this is also kind of illustrating that um, that integration is something that makes a lot of sense for these types of uh, partial differential equations, and also that uh, it makes sense to look at patches. So that is also how we will design our discontinuous Galerke method. We'll look at certain patches, and these patches will be, well, precisely the elements in our mesh. <clears throat> and that is actually very important, uh, because right now, one thing that I would like you to realize is that uh, the discontinuous Galerke basis functions are not subspaces of H1, right? H1 spaces require derivatives to be well-defined. If you have a discontinuity, the derivative is not well-defined. So discontinuous Galerkin methods are not subspaces of the H1 Sobolev space. And that was precisely the Sobolev space that we needed for our partial differential equation. So we're going to have to play some tricks. That is why we call DG methods non-conformal methods. Yeah, that is that is a term that you might come across uh, when you look into DG literature. They're non-conformal methods. They are not subspaces of the relevant uh, Sobolev spaces for the partial differential equation. And only within a single element. Uh, do they have the sufficient amount of regularity and the sufficient amount of smoothness and are they actually subspaces of H1? Yeah, so based on this realization as well as what I just said that, that integration along patches is, is a very natural thing to do for these, uh, um, these systems of, of uh, hyperbolic conservation laws. What we're going to do is we're going to set, uh, set our partial differential equation or, or state the PDE on element interiors because only there do our basis functions have the necessary uh, amount of, of smoothness and then we're going to couple the elements with the flux functions Mm 
you know, with the flex functions. And also, that's the strategy that we'll, we'll pursue uh, trying to make discontinuous lurking formulations out of, um, out of these uh, hyperbolic systems of equations, hyperbolic systems of, of conservation laws. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to say find a solution. And let me, let, me, let me focus on scalar conservation laws for now. Um, so let's, let's first say that. Consider scalar conservation laws. So d dt of phi plus f of phi. And that function f may still be very, I'm oh, sorry, divergence of f. That function f might still be very complex, right? It might be linear, might be nonlinear, might have an advective field inside of it or, or not. Um, but there, the vector of states has become just one state. That's, that's what we're going to focus on first. <clears throat> so then what we're going to do is we're going to say find, well, that state function phi in H1. But wait a second, we're not allowed to do that other than only inside of the element. So I'm going to say find this guy inside of the element H1 of K. So the element interior domain such that, and then we have our weak formulation. So we, we multiply our functions by test functions. We do the same thing for the second guy and, and naturally we do integration by parts. So then we obtain here an integration over k, here have a minus, integration over k of f of phi x dotted with, so f is now a vector here, dotted with the gradient of v. And that also gives us now an element boundary term, k, where we have f of phi of, now f of phi dot n, these are both vectors, times v. And that is, has to be equal to zero, and it has to be zero such that for all, let me write it here, for all, such that for all functions v also in h1 k, we have to follow. Okay, so now we, we have sort of made a statement on, on our partial differential equation, but only on a subdomain only on the uh, the subdomains of our of our elements the element interiors <clears throat> and how do we now formulate a global method a method that not only looks at the element interiors but is able to 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 uh, have information cross flow in and flow out well again we couple the elements with the flux functions yeah so that's precisely the function that's here on the boundary and we have a bunch of choices for this because there's a certain level of arbitrariness. So if we if we now use these discontinuous basis functions, then we have two values of phi on this on this uh, on this boundary. This is double valued. Yeah, so if we consider it from one element, it has this value. But if we look at the neighboring element and we try to do the same integration, well, then we find that it has this value. And these might be completely different values, right? So now I'm drawing the same thing, but uh, the idea is that you have two degrees of freedom. So it might have, this one might be that value. <clears throat> so the question is, but what is f of phi on partial k? Phi has two values. So here we are left with a choice. We can do a whole bunch of things. We could take phi from the one side. We could take phi from the other side. 
and we could take uh, the average of both phi's. Um, we could even take not, not just the average of the phi's, but we could take the average of, of the flux function from both sides. So we have a whole bunch of choices, and, and neither one of these choices is bad or, or particularly good. They're just different choices. Well, actually, they might be uh, better or worse choices, but um, that follows from the analysis. At this point, we, we, we just are left with a certain choice. Um, and the point here being is that different choices lead to different discontinuous Glurkin methods. So rather than the finite element method where you typically have one formulation for a certain problem, discontinuous Glurkin methods have many different uh, flavors depending on your choice of this flux function. Different choices lead to different DG methods. Yeah, so and at this point, we will replace f of u by the numerical flux, is what we call this, which we call f which is a, oh sorry, f of phi, excuse me, uh, which is a function of phi plus and phi minus, are, different, are two different uh, um, values on, on either side of the boundary, and we, ha we add a hat to illustrate that this is a, a numerical quantity. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is our define, so we define a numerical flux. So with this choice of flux, and we have different uh, options, we can finally obtain our discontinuous Glurkin method by discretizing our space on each element and choosing, substituting uh, this numerical flux. So then we get the DG method, find phi h in, well, our DG space on each element, such that for all test functions vh in dg on that element, we have that the integral of the time derivative of phi h, vh, minus, well, the flux inside of the domain is just well defined, so we don't really have a choice here, uh, dot the gradient of v, plus, well, and on the boundary, we now choose this numerical flux f uh, hat of phi plus and phi minus, dot n v, and that's going to be equal to zero. And with that flux, you couple the elements uh, from, from either side, and you get a global method that defines the solution everywhere. Yeah, so there's quite a lot to tell about these methods, different fluxes, different properties, um, and that's what we'll do in the next couple of lectures. Uh, I already wanted to show you this, because this is what you'll need for the assignment. Now, I see that my battery is running low, so I'm starting to speed up a little bit. I hope it was still clear. Uh, thank you for your attention, and, and have a nice uh, holiday.